Hi, I'm Dave Bloom, CEO of SnackSafely.com. I'm coming to you today because we're being inundated with questions from our readership. People who are confused, concerned about the FDA's recent guidance. Uh, and so I thought I'd come to you, explain what the guidance actually does, talk about how it might affect the food allergy community, and then talk about how SnackSafely.com can actually help you through this time of uncertainty. So let's start with the FDA's guidance. A week ago Friday, on the evening of a holiday, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, issued new guidance that relaxes the rules around ingredient labeling. Now, they did this on a holiday weekend with no prior warning and no opportunity for community input. So it's evident that the FDA knew this was going to be controversial and didn't want to know from any feedback before they issued this guidance. Now, what does this guidance actually do? Well, the whole idea behind the guidance is to allow food companies who are having trouble sourcing one particular ingredient, allow them to source another ingredient in place of that without having to disclose the new ingredient on the label. Now, that's only under certain circumstances, but those, circum uh, those circumstances will certainly have an impact on the food allergy community. So the way I see this impacting the food allergy community is really in one of two ways. Uh, for those people whose allergies are confined to the top eight allergens, and those include peanuts, tree nuts, milk, eggs, soy, wheat, fish, and shellfish, you might be impacted one way. But if your allergies fall outside of the top eight, you might be impacted a completely different way. So let me start with those folks that have allergies confined to the top eight. Um, you'll be happy to know that the FDA's new guidance does not impact the top eight as ingredients. So uh, if let's say a manufacturer introduces a new ingredient that is one of the top eight, they still have to notify you of that on the label. Nothing changes there with the FDA's new guidance. But where uh, folks with allergies to the top eight may be impacted really have to do with uh, two other issues. The first are highly refined oils and derivatives. So what are those? The FDA has a class of ingredients which it calls highly refined. And what that means is that those ingredients have been processed or denatured to such a point that all the protein has been removed from the ingredient. Now, examples include highly refined peanut oil, uh, highly refined tree nut oils, highly refined sesame oil, uh, soybean oil, highly refined soy lecithin. Those are all ingredients that the FDA sees as highly refined, and they don't consider them to be allergenic. And that's important because many allergists will advise you to avoid even those highly refined ingredients because some people do react to them. Now, here's where it gets a little bit sticky under this new guidance. Let's say a company is having trouble sourcing canola oil. And uh, instead, what they're going to be doing is substituting in highly refined soybean oil. Well, the FDA doesn't consider highly refined oils to be allergenic at all. So in theory, what could happen is a company could substitute soybean oil for canola oil and not reflect that change on the label. Now, it's very scary for folks with a soybean allergy or a peanut allergy when peanut oil is involved. Uh, but we perceive that that could be something that will happen in the future under this new guidance. Another way uh, folks with top eight allergies uh, might be impacted has to do with uh, the advisory warnings that you see on packages. And you've, you've all seen these. Uh, they read things like um, may contain traces of almonds or uh, manufactured on equipment that also processes milk. You've seen those uh, advisory warnings. What you may not know is those warnings are entirely voluntary. The FDA has absolutely nothing to say about those advisories. Some companies decide to 
put those on their label. Other companies decide not to put those on the labels. We even know of companies that will warn of the potential for cross contact with, say, peanuts, but won't warn you that milk is processed on the same equipment. So uh, it it's really depends on the manufacturer and uh, what they choose to put on the label. Those advisory warnings were never reliable. They weren't in the past, they aren't now. What they are good for is uh, they're good to warn you that a product is not safe for your particular allergies. But the fact that uh, a particular product doesn't have those warnings doesn't mean the product is safe. You still have to call the company and you have to uh, ask them very specific questions about uh, how that particular product is made. You have to get very specific answers in return, and then you need to make a decision. So those advisory warnings were never reliable to begin with, but now they're even less reliable. And I'll explain why. Let's say you have a severe peanut allergy um, and you have a favorite candy bar. That candy bar bears a warning, manufactured in a facility that uh, also processes almonds. Now, you don't have an almond allergy, so you don't have a problem with that. You've also done your due diligence. You've called the company and you've asked them specifically about whether they process peanuts in their facility. They don't. And so you've been relying on this candy bar for years. Well, let's say that company now has problems uh, sourcing almonds. Well, they've decided that they're going to instead substitute in peanuts. Now, your candy bar uh, is not affected because it doesn't have peanuts or almonds. But another candy bar in their facility is being affected. So now they've swapped in peanuts for almonds. But what they don't have to do is they don't have to change the advisory labeling on your candy bar. So your candy bar at this point now still warns you that almonds are being processed in the facility but it says nothing about peanuts. So that's really more ambiguity that's being injected by this FDA guidance, and it will be problematic for the food allergy community. So that's how uh, the new guidance may affect the top eight, but let's talk about how the new guidance might affect those folks with allergies to foods outside of the top eight. I hate to say this, but um, it was the Wild West before, and now it's the Wild, Wild, Wild West. So previously, and many folks know this, your allergen of concern may be hidden under some kind of generic term, like uh, natural flavoring or maybe uh, spices. Well, that's still the case. That was always the case. That's still the case today. Um, but I'll give you an example of where uh, this becomes even more ambiguous. So let's say you have an allergy to sunflower seeds and you have a favorite product and that product doesn't contain sunflower seeds um, and, uh, and sunflower seeds are not processed in the facility. Let's say that facility has problems processing another kind of seed uh, and they decide they're going to substitute for that seed sunflower seeds. Well, sunflower seeds is not a top uh, eight allergen. So they can make that substitution without notifying you on the label. So now that product contains sunflower seeds, it's not in the ingredient listing, and there's a problem. So what can you do? I hate to say this, but you need to redouble and retriple your efforts at contacting manufacturers and explicitly asking them questions. Does this now contain sunflower seeds? Are sunflower seeds processed anywhere in the facility? You have to make those calls and ask those specific questions. And hopefully you'll get very specific answers to those questions. How can we at snacksafely.com help? Back in 2014, we founded our manufacturer partnership with a handful of companies. That handful 
has grown to over 130 responsible manufacturers today. Now, these manufacturers agree to disclose in very pre precise detail how they process 11 allergens, which include the top eight that I mentioned before, as well as sesame, mustard, and gluten. They disclose to us how they process those allergens, and then we give them free listings in our publications, which include our allergens product screening service, as well as our safe snack guide and custom safe snack guides that are used by families and individuals and schools and uh, youth sports leagues and, and camps throughout the country. Now, as part of our terms of service in joining our partnership, each manufacturer is required to notify us immediately whenever they make a change to the formulation of any of their products. That was always the case in the past. That's the case now. If we receive notification that a formulation has changed, we change our database, we change all of our uh, publications, and we issue an advisory on our website as well as on our social media platforms. So you can rely on our publications to always have up-to-date information on the ingredients as well as how allergens are processed in the facility. So use our publications with the assurance knowing that you have the latest information. Another way we're helping is we've reached out to each of our 130 partner manufacturers and we've requested that they pledge specifically that they will not substitute any kind of ingredients without reflecting that substitution on the label. And so far we have about 55, maybe 60 of our manufacturers have responded and we're expecting responses uh, continuing throughout the next few weeks. So as we receive those responses, we'll update a specific web page on our site and you can visit that page anytime and see precisely which of our partner manufacturers have taken that pledge. So that's what I wanted to discuss today. I hope this video has provided some answers to questions that you may have had. And if you find it informative, please share it with friends and family, other folks who may be impacted by the FDA's new guidelines. Uh, I just wanted to close by saying um, we wish you good health. Uh, we hope that you're abiding by uh, the social distancing guidelines out there. You're wearing a mask when you go out. You're not congregating with, uh, with large groups of people. We want you to be healthy. Uh, you've got enough to worry about with your food allergies. So please, please, please take all the precautions you can. This pandemic is not over. Again, my name is Dave Bloom. Happy to, uh, to be with you today. And thanks very much for listening.